Hi guys, just thought I'd read to you an article. It's published today. This is through Press TV. Iran. Iranian Press TV. Okay. President Obama and the Dep Democratic Party announced today that they would no longer support a platform that advocates listing the city of Jerusalem as the capital of a Jewish state. The President and the Majority Party made this statement for a variety of reasons, primarily, however, based upon pragmatism. Now, you can go... I'll put the link underneath so you can read it for yourself. Uh, about the uh, breakup of the Jewish community in the US and what support Obama says he has. Now, of course, you've got Mitt Romney out there. He's somebody who's on the uh, Yahweh extinction list, rather the Asherah extinction list. Um, both. both. <laughs> What's that, babe? He's got no, no, he hasn't got any chance at all. Okay, this uh, guy Romney's primary backer in. Apparently last week, when he, or two weeks ago when he was in Israel, he brought back $60 million in cash in his little kitty, which is totally illegal. And uh, he's, he's just bought and paid for. What a... Piece of shit. Yahweh, what a uh, piece of shit. Romney's primary... Yeah, Romney, Romney's primary backer in the American Jewish community is Sheldon Adelson, now, this guy's a murderous thug whose history of involvement in gambling in the US and China has led to legal actions and accusations of involvement in prostitution and financial crimes. The critical aspect of the democratic platform was the removal of this language which had been included in the 2008 platform. So this is a, a 180, if you like, from the the last presidential platform. This is what they've removed. The United States and its quartet past partners should continue to isolate Hamas while it renounces terrorism, recognises Israel's right to exist and abides by past agreements. Sustained American leadership for peace and security will require patient efforts and the personal commitment of the President of the United States. The creation of a Palestinian state through final status negotiations together with an international compensation mechanism should resolve the issue of Palestinian refugees by allowing them to settle there rather than in Israel. So Palestine, which belongs to the Palestinians only, and Israel... Now, so this is what was included in the run-up to the 2008 platform, but this has all been removed. Uh, still quoting, all understand that it is unrealistic to expect the outcome of final status negotiations to be a full and complete return to the armistice lines <clears throat> of 1949. The parties have agreed that Jerusalem is a matter for final status negotiations. It should remain an undivided city accessible to people of all faiths. So that's all of the platform that's been removed from this election. And uh, yeah, just spewing, you know, the, together with an international compensation mechanism, you know, for, for Israel's, so, you know, it's put on the international community for Israel's crimes against humanity in just Palestine. Okay, continuing. The Republican Party website, Breitbart.com, whose founder died mysteriously in his early 40s, issued the following analysis of the significant changes in direction for America. Changes Romney and the Republicans expressed shock and horror at, quoting, the, cam <clears throat> the campaign isn't even saying the borders of Jerusalem are subject to negotiation, which would mean that the western part of the city would remain with the Jewish state. The Obama administration has removed all reference to Jerusalem from its platform, indicating a belief that the entire city is up for grabs. 
Now, those who believe in a strong United States-Israel alliance should be concerned that this year's platform does not even pay lip service to these key issues for the future of the Jewish state. End of quote. <clears throat> Today, Republican candidate Mitt Romney, who recently attended overseas fundraisers and brought back $60 million in cash, the first American politician to do so as foreign contributions to American elections are a felony, made the following statement. Now herein, this guy is on their shit list. It, quoting, it is unfortunate that the entire Democratic Party has embraced President Obama's shameful refusal to acknowledge that Jerusalem is Israel's capital. Four years of President Obama's repeated attempts to create distance between the United States and our cherished ally have led the Democratic Party to remove from their platform an unequivocal acknowledgement of a simple reality. As President, I will restore our relationship with Israel and stand shoulder to shoulder with our close ally. Bought and paid for murderer, genocide, monger, warmongers. The man is dead meat. So, Obama hasn't been cooperating throughout all of his presidency. Good on Obama. And uh, so that the world knows, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, Brian and go lightly Marshall, couldn't give a shit about Jerusalem because it is a shit hole. Right? However, it will be the Persians, that is Iran, who will rebuild it. It has no desire to return to the scene of the crime where they crucified him, not until they receive him as their king. Right? Okay, political analysts in the US believe that Netanyahu's interference in the US electoral, elect, electoral process, something that has earned him criticism at home, has led to this change in America, American policy. Others have seen it coming for years. Military leaders in both the US and Israel have repeatedly told Prime Minister Netanyahu that threats of military action against Iran were irrational. Now, this is getting down to what we've already touched on, but this is a better description. Last week, General Martin Dempsey, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, America's highest military leader under the President, travelled to Israel to personally deliver a message to Netanyahu. Now, just thinking about um, Romney's cohorts, apparently Donald Trump is a, a good mate of Mitt Romney. He's got to go, sorry, Donald, you've, Donald, you've done your dash and uh, you're no longer the king of anything. You're going to be dead meat along with uh, Romney. The Israeli leader was told that under no circumstances would the US participate in an attack on Iran and that such an act by Israel where it unilateral would damage relations between the two nations. Following this week, General Dempsey flew to Bagram Air Force Base in Kabul where his aircraft was destroyed by a missile attack. Sources within the Pentagon indicate Sources within the Pentagon indicate that America's counter battery missile defence system was disabled by a computer virus during the attack which would otherwise have been impossible. No source for this electronic intrusion in such a key defence system at such a critical time has been found. It was Israel. Soon after this attack, General Dempsey announced a cutback of US forces participating in joint military exercises with Israel. The initial force of 5,000 troops has been scaled back to 1,200. Good on him. Bring them all back. America has also promised to move two AEGIS destroyers into the region. These are naval vessels with advanced air defence systems. Where two had been promised, there will now only be one. The breakdown of relations between the US and Israel, though several years in the making, is more critical than ever with an Islamic government taking control in Egypt and dozens of Egyptian army officers friendly to Israel being forcibly retired. Israel is in the process of making desperate attempts to repair that relationship which would, 
as things are progressing, eventually end all control of Gaza, an issue very much at the heart of Egyptian citizens who fought to overthrow the Mubarak regime. Israel invited the Egyptian president, Mohamed Morsi, to Israel. However, this offer was declined. The issue was reported by Ynet News in Israel, quoting, A day after Israel's foreign minister called on Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi to visit Israel, a Muslim Brotherhood official called such a visit impossible. Good on them. There is no possibility for Morsi to visit the Zionist entity, Gamal Hashmet, of the Muslim Brotherhood's Freedom and Justice Party told an Egyptian online news magazine, Ynet reported. President Morsi's patriotism will not allow him to do so, Hashmet said, saying that the presidential palace will turn down the invitation. A Victor Lieberman issued the invitation Tuesday during a speech at a legal conference. He called for the visit after Morsi said in an interview Monday with Reuters that he would not attempt to overturn the 1979 peace treaty between e Egypt and Israel. In light of threats against Iran, current instability in Europe, a key shift of allegiance by the US in the days preceding the national election and a new government in Egypt, these issues combined with the serious problems in Syria have created an atmosphere of failure and powerlessness among political extremists in Israel. Additionally, military and intelligence leaders in Israel are increasingly public in their criticism of the bellicose statements made by Netanyahu and, follow, and fellow Likudist, Likudist militants. The real loss to Israel will be the special relationship with the United States, which may have been damaged beyond repair. If this is so, then the sands of time may eventually close in on the Israeli state, one that has thus far failed to recognise and adapt to a changing world. That is written by Gordon Duff, who is a columnist. He is a Marine Vietnam veteran, a combat inf Infantry man and senior editor at Veterans Today. So you can read all about it. This was on Press TV's site under today's date. So good on Obama. Yeah, he's looking at Netanyahu as if he can't wait. <laughs> to see him looking like a pile of dung. <sighs> okay, enjoy that one, guys. Circulate it. Somebody sent it to Donald Trump and put his name on it. He's going the same way as Mitt Romney. <laughs>